Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be taking a quick look at the PVE tier list. We're making a PVE tier list for the first time today on this channel. We've done two prior PVP tier lists, but today it's time to look into the PVE side of things. So when we're talking about level 60 expeditions, whether it's mutated or non-mutated, a lot of people are running very, very high level M10 mutated dungeons, and they're doing speed runs. So I talked with a guy on PVEbuilds.xyz. You're going to have a lot of great information there. Um, the guy in charge is actually named Roloff. He does a great job explaining where these weapons belong. I talked to him personally going over the tier list, making sure these were all in about the right spots. We agreed with everything and here we go today, starting off with the fire staff. Where does the fire staff belong in the current PVE tier list? Well, it's going to be an obvious C. So the fire staff doesn't provide anything too crazy. It's nothing too out of the ordinary. It's just going to provide small amounts of damage. And when I say small, you may think, well, what about when you run Genesis? Yeah, it's a decent, you know, it's a decent option for Genesis because you are going to do a little bit more damage. However, when it comes to the perks that you're going to be able to get on things like the hatchet, the spear, the great, uh, the great sword, the rapier, all of those are going to be much higher DPS. So the fire staff is going to be a low tier weapon when it comes to PVE. It's much better than, in my opinion, things like the musket maybe or even the bow because you're going to be able to not waste any ammo is one big bonus. And then obviously as well against things like Angry Earth you're going to do a lot more damage compared to a musket. So I want to talk about those other weapons as well. So let's go into the next one. So Spear is going to belong right in the A tier, right in the middle of the A tier, to be honest, because it is very, very important for somebody on your team to take this as their secondary. It's going to be the fastest way to get that Ren cap at 30%, and you're going to be able to go things like Fortifying Perforate, which is going to be a lot of utility for you, and then Enfeebling Skewer as well. And these are both great armor perks that are going to help you do a lot better in these dungeons. So Spear isn't going to be your main source of damage. So what is? Well, I'll tell you what's not going to be first. That's the musket. The musket is unbelievably bad in PvE. The only time you want to use the musket is if you're going up against a solo boss or something of that nature. Never really in dungeons do you ever really want to pull out a musket. A musket's just never going to be that AoE damage, that burst damage that you need. It could be used, like I said, for solo content. So if they come out with solo dungeons, they could have a spot there. A musket's okay, maybe against a final boss. You're just doing solo target damage, which it's not even the best for that, though. So it's just unfortunately going to be in that F tier. So next in line, we have the sword and shield. This is one I kind of flopped around on because it does have the highest DPS in the game with best in slot perks. However, if you miss one auto attack, that falls apart due to the slow attack speed. So sword and shield, I have the A tier. The A tier is also because, obviously, all tanks, this is going to be an S tier weapon. Every tank's going to take Sword and Shield, so it belongs in that A to S tier. Uh, sword and Shield's a great weapon for dungeons. Everybody knows this. Tanks specifically, you're going to want to use the Sword and Shield almost every time you go into a dungeon, whether you're speedrunning or not. So this is a huge thing to recommend for all players, like I said, that want to just kind of survive and have that... Uh, you know, have that possibility of doing damage as well. So next we have the Ice Gauntlet, which does shine when it does come down to some AoE damage and AoE mobs. It's right in line with that Fire Staff. The only reason I think the Ice Gauntlet is just a tad better than the Fire Staff is because it does apply that slow, which gives you about 10 to 20% more DPS. But as a pure DPS weapon, it's really just a lot of effort for low damage. So the next weapon that we have in line is the hammer, and this is a high B. I think the hammer actually is one of the better weapons for dungeons. However, people use it incorrectly. So you should actually be doing one heavy into four seconds of light attacks, not all charged heavies. So that's something that a lot of people just do wrong, and they're losing a lot of DPS because of that. So Warhammer, a high B tier, almost A tier, depending on how you use it. And you're obviously going to want to take Sundering Shockwave with the hammer as well. So now we're taking a look at the first S tier weapon in the game. If you can guess this one, it's an obvious, it's Hatchet. Hatchet in PvE is easily the strongest DPS, most consistent DPS in dungeons right now. However, that may change with the Greatsword. We'll talk about that here very, very soon. Hatchet is currently the most consistent DPS in the game. If you run Refreshing Torrent on the Hatchet and get instant resets, you will continue to do the most damage on your team. So next up, it's a no-brainer. It's the Life Staff. Has to be an S. If you don't have a Life Staff user in your group, you're going to probably die in most dungeons. Many people are using the Life Staff wrong. Make sure to take the AoE healing only. It's probably the best way to run these high mutated dungeons without dying. 
The life staff's a necessity, and for that reason, like I said, that S tier just makes perfect sense. The next one in line is the Void Gauntlet. The Void Gauntlet's going to be a B plus for many reasons. It's great when it's paired with the life staff, a lot of people running life staff void, and it makes perfect sense. So Void Gauntlet's going to do a lot of things right. And one of the biggest things you're gonna to wanna to take when it comes to the Void Gauntlet is petrifying scream and nullifying oblivion. And by the way, I didn't really talk about the life staff perks that you're gonna to wanna to find, but it's going to be mending protection, fortifying sacred ground, and Vicious Beacon for the Life Staff. And then when we talk a little bit more about the Void Gauntlet, Petrifying Scream, Null Flying Oblivion are definitely going to be the Void Gauntlet armor perks that are so, so important to make sure you're using this weapon correctly. The Void Gauntlet, though, is a high B, low A tier just because of the sustain and it hits like a hatchet. But Void Mutation and Fire Mutation hurt elemental weapons so much. So a solid B plus is right where I'll stick it for now. So Blunderbuss is the next one in line, and this one is unfortunately just fun for light tanking, but it's really not that great DPS, it's not that great in general. When you're looking for efficient weapons for dungeons, Blunderbuss just doesn't fit in. So it fits in that D tier specifically because it's really just not that great in PvE. Next up, we have the bow, which bow can be decent AoE or single target DPS, but it struggles to do both. And while still performing at its peak, it's probably just going to be that D tier. Right with the blunderbuss, this weapon just doesn't have what it takes to be a consistent DPS meter in the New World Expeditions or Mutation Dungeons that we have been running so often to get those shards. So bow, just kind of stick to PvP for now. It's not going to have a huge, huge highlight or huge impact on your PvE dungeon runs. Next up, we have the Great Axe. The Great Axe actually is very, very solid right now in Expeditions, and for that reason, we're going to stick it at a solid B. You always want to have at least one Great Axe per team, and two for Lazarus and Corrupted Expeditions. It's going to help you do a lot of different things. The biggest armor perk you can take with this one is definitely going to be Insatiable Gravwell, followed by Enfeebling Maelstrom and Crippling Reap. So now we have a little test for you guys, as we have the A plus slot open and the S plus slot open, where do you believe the Great Sword and the Rapier belong? The Rapier works really, really well in Lazarus, and King Tondo works for all players. So it basically gives you higher base DPS than Hatchet, but less consistent and higher skill cap due to lack of grit. On the Rapier, people are going to typically take Leeching Flurry, Omnidirectional Evade, and Keen Tondo. This is so that you can continue to put out the massive DPS and continue to heal from the Leeching Flurry as well. Last but not least, we have the Great Sword, which fits in that S plus column. And the Great Sword just seems very, very overtuned right now when it comes to PvE and potentially PvP as well. The Great Sword should be the highest damage in the game when released, according to numbers we have and testing we've done in the new expedition. Not only will the Great Sword be one of the most fun weapons to play in expeditions, but like I said, it's definitely one of the most viable. So make sure to have fun with the new builds that you can make out of this Great Sword coming in the Brimstone update. If you guys want to stay up to date with all things PvE and PvP, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on so you guys can stay up to date with me and New World. And if you haven't already, make sure to jump down into the description of today's video click on the link below pvebuilds.xyz it's going to give you a huge huge chance to look at some of these amazing builds that they put together while speed running m10 these people have done some incredible things so give them some awesome support down in the description and thanks to them for helping me out with the video